Hey traders, Mike Katz, Seven Points Capital. The spies today, we again made another higher high and we are holding above 260. So that would be interesting. We're probably starting to stall out soon, but right now it still has legs. Um, we're grinding higher. This seems important, 59, 60 level. If we get back below that, that might be an interesting trade as well. But for now, we're still holding there. And a lot of sideways today. If you look at the range for today on the spies, we opened somewhere here, went up, pulled back up, took out highs, failed back to lows. So sideways day in the spies. Um, there wasn't a whole lot going on. There was some earnings plays. Snap, Snap was down. Their CEO resigned. That was decent action for us. Um, as you, some of you guys already know, anything with lots of volume, with a thick quote, it, we usually tend to do well in that. And this thing traded, if I'm not mistaken, looks like about 60, 70 million shares. So that wasn't too bad. It wasn't a massive range, but it was decent. Uh, I don't know if you guys can gather anything from these executions. Um, probably not a whole lot, but um, this was pretty good. This was my best stock on the day. What else? Um, I traded some PCG. I covered it in swing completely this morning and probably done with that for now. We uh, There seems to be a buyer in this thing last couple of days. I don't, can't tell what, what's going on or why someone is buying, but there's a pretty significant buyer in this. Uh, I was thinking either it's short covering, I was thinking either it's somebody arbitraging maybe with some convertible notes or figured out some little edge where they're locking in a small gain, doing some sort of a pair trade with either a convertible note or their debt or some something's going on here. But regardless, there is buying and I can't quite figure out why. Uh, we're finishing off the lows second day in a row. This thing could either be a zero or it could be back up to 15 if somebody buys them or if or if um, they announce that their liability is smaller than what it was, what they expected. So, you know, the, most likely all that's going to happen overnight, creating more gaps. And for now, I think I'm done with it. Intraday, I'll keep looking at it, but um, for swing, I am out. And what else? We traded some, oh, Mbot. A couple of guys traded Mbot. I didn't trade this one today. I traded it yesterday. Uh, Mbot, quick rip to 13 and change, and then unwinds the rest of the day. Um, locates were a little bit easier today, and that was pretty good. Yesterday, I traded it here. I was able to really be patient and wait for this thing to set up really well and then confirm and I shorted it here, covered some here and the rest near 10 right here. Went a little bit lower and today, I don't know, I just stayed away from it. It seemed like, I don't know, my thinking was if a large offering was taken down at $10, then maybe that becomes the magnet for the stock for a while. So I kind of stayed away. And look, let's see, we closed at 980. So good range, but a couple of guys did well, but I actually ended up staying away. Um, another symbol that was in play today was LGND. This was a Citron hit, a pharmaceutical. They said this is their best one since Valiant. And I didn't end up trading this one, LGND. No trades there. I didn't want to chase. With uh, Citron and use types of hit pieces, what I like to do is wait for this thing to move initially, wait for the pullback. And it wasn't a big pullback and it started going pretty quickly here. But I didn't want, I didn't feel like chasing. I was in a really selective mode today. I actually had a really nice day being really selective and that's going to be my theme going forward for, for a little bit. Um, so this one I ended up not trading, but it ended up having decent follow through went, uh, broke 100 by a little bit. And then Adam F defended it here, somewhere here. So um, we'll see, might be some more range in this tomorrow. And we'll see how the market reacts to any more headlines for this name. But um, 
like I said, I was trying to be selective. Uh, KTOV was one that, uh, let's see, KTOV. So, I uh, had a pretty nice entry here. Again, very patient and scooped out here, added back and stopped out of everything here. So this ended up being a small winner and then just started grinding higher. And um, I started, I put on my watch list on, on here for swing. So in the swing, I was thinking, here, let's see, let me see if I can bring it up on think or swim. Ba bam there we are. All right, so do that there and look at a fiver. Okay, so now we uh, we popped up, pulled back to about two dollars here. Popped up, tried to make new highs and failed again, and came back to two dollars. So when it started grinding up, I had this on watch for potentially a lower high somewhere here, thinking this could be a good setup and swing. Um, I knew that there was potential dilution coming. So um, I had it on watch. Uh, I hadn't put anything on for swing. I thought maybe it could get a little bit higher uh, or maybe take a little bit longer before it rolls over and I missed it. But um, the drop there was pretty quick and the um, there was no time to react. They dropped an offering midday and this thing went bam, straight down to $1.50. I think $1.75 was what the offering was priced at. So this would have been a nice nail, pretty quick one. It had I gotten my swing trade off, but no go there. So um, a couple of day trades here. And like I said, I was being selective and started grinding higher. I didn't want to fall, um, fall prey to some of the shenanigans that have been going out lately. And then I'll talk about TBLT for a second. TBLT on a one minute um, runner in the morning pre-market market opens here and then starts to go at this point I'm thinking this thing would probably look to unwind here looking like backside if we can zoom in like that this was looking like it's setting up pretty well. And I got a starter going. Had I used a little bit more discretion and patience, I probably should have slammed in once these lows broke. And that probably would have been better and probably get me to avoid being um, shorting it. But it just felt wrong right away. It felt controlled. And then I closed my position right away. It felt like they were not letting it go down. I saw the buyer on the tape. And I'll quickly talk about in a minute about what I'm seeing on the tape that um, I think could be going on with a lot of these names. But as soon as I realized that, I closed out and I tweeted that this symbol doesn't feel very natural. There's meaning there's a lot of control here. And then a few minutes later, bam, it just takes off and gets halted with a volatility halt. So. Look at that. I ended up just avoiding it. I thought from here, this could potentially squeeze much higher. Who knows? So I stayed away. And then, bam, they just fell out of bed. Um, these names right now are just having some pretty crazy moves. So uh, I started to wait again. And then you guys could see I'm looking for an H pattern. I'm looking for a curl down after a drop. And then when I get the confirmation, I get some more, but I, I ticked it at the low. I got the low tick here. And um, I wasn't risking a lot, but I just realized that this was a trap. I got out and then I'm thinking, okay, I probably need to do sell rips and buy dips. It's one of those names. It's one of those times right now where I can't chase weakness. And I did that for a second there. So, um, I shorted there and your four covered into this drop, this drop, and this drop. The problem with selling rips and buying dips is the risk reward is really crappy. And then what, I, what could happen is it just, you know, it's one of those times that it's just not gonna top out and then boom, it takes off 
and either you don't stop out or you can't stop out. And then this thing ends up being a massive loser. So the risk reward to picking tops, you know, selling rips and buying dips is not that great. So I try to usually, I try to avoid that. But it was pretty clear what was going on here. So what I'm seeing with, with some of these names right now is I'm seeing some sort of a, a two-sided action. And this could be, this is complete speculation. This could be way, way off. But I'm seeing some sort of algorithm that's spinning out buy orders and just buying everything in sight. And it's like buy, 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 lifting offers, uh, chewing through large offers, just not caring about anything, buy, buy, buy all day long. And that's one side of the algo, I think. And then they end up really controlling the stock that way and then bringing, you know, turning off that algo at times, making it look weak, making it go, break support, and then turning the algo back on. And then all the shorts are stuck and then bam, it starts to go up again. And then, you know, where they start to, where the shorts start to puke it out and start to cover is now where that same buyer goes in and starts to sell. And then you see the, on the rips, you see these massive orders hitting bids and taking out bids five, 10 cents below the bid, just trying to get size off. So this, and then meantime, the whole buy algo is still going all day, just going and going. And they pause it at times to trap shorts, but for the most part, it's going. And then it goes up and then bam, again, they hit it into the highs and they sell it. And it's, it feels very controlled to me. So I noticed that. And I think for, as a momentum trader looking for follow through, that could be very difficult because you're, you're selling the dips and then you're buying when it doesn't work, you're buying the rips. And that's the inverse of this type of a symbol that, um, you know, just, it's been a little bit more difficult with some of these names. So the adjustment in my opinion is to spot these and to do less or, you know, Somebody can just uh, try to sell rips, but that, the risk reward there is not that great. So I would say just do less and, and be aware of, of these types of situations. And lastly, I'll mention I'm getting lots of DMs about how certain traders aren't doing well. I'm getting lots of DMs about how certain traders are saying, I'll never trade low floats again. I'm only looking to trade large caps or I'm, I'm taking a break. It's obvious the Twitter sphere is having difficulty and uh, it's understandable, right? So um, my advice is when times are great, we can't trade enough. We want the biggest size and we want to be the hero on Twitter and we want to do the most. And when, when it gets tougher, traders need to just do less, size down, realize that, yeah, maybe, maybe a few days ago, you know, I was making a shit ton of money. You know, maybe a few months ago, I was making even more. And now it's just not the case. So if you're, if you're struggling, do less. Clear your mind, size down, risk less, have rules, and then things will fall into place. But, you know, if you're doing well, keep it up. Congrats. And I, I'm seeing both. I'm seeing people do really well. I'm seeing people do really crappy. And... You know, I think it's important to just realize when it's not working, do less. It's that simple. End of story. So that's it. I want to thank you guys for watching. Stay safe. My cats, seven points capital with today's trader takeaways. Mm -hmm.